Good day, everyone. Today, I, together with the CTE Audrey Ear Task Force, will show you a sample teaching demonstration in teaching an online class. This is not just a demonstration, but a new normal adoption of online teaching. We will be using the lesson design sequence adopted from Marzano, What Works in the Classroom. This lesson design sequence is a merge of Modeline Hunter model for mastery learning, or also known as the basic lesson design sequence for direct instruction, together with the TPAC framework of Mishra and Cooler in 2006. To start the lesson, I will introduce the first lesson design sequence of Modeline Hunter model by posting a video and question in the Google Classroom. This prompt activity will focus the student's attention before the actual lesson begins. Since I already posted the link of the video in the material section of the Google Classrooms, the students can now open the link. It will direct them at YouTube where they can watch the short animation film. Here's the video posted on the materials at Google Classroom.
After watching, the students will answer the question in the short answer activity section in Google Classroom. The question is, what is the message of the animated story? Answers are posted in the discussion board and discussion thread can be viewed. Since the activity is asynchronous, I will set a certain deadline for the completion of activity. In the second sequence, which is objective and focus, students learn more effectively when they know what they are supposed to be learning and why. Teachers can teach more effectively when the students clearly know the task to accomplish, the assessment criteria, and how will they demonstrate learning as a result. In this part, I post the objective of the lesson in the Google Classroom stream in advance. The objective of the lesson is to let them differentiate what is a topic, main idea, theme, and moral of the story. For the third sequence, which is input and modeling, I will be considering how to present the new knowledge, process, or skill to the students in the most effective manner. This could be through discovery, discussion, reading, listening, observing, and etc. Input includes the vocabulary, skills, and concepts the teacher will impart to the students, the information the students need to know in order to be successful. For this part, I will let students watch a video discussion on what is a topic, main idea, theme, and moral. Links of the video is in the material section of Google. Welcome to this Memetrics video over topics and main ideas. A topic is the word or phrase that everything in a text refers back to. See if you can guess the topic of these pictures. The topic is baseball. Now let's look for the topic in a text. Music can be an effective study tool. Some people say that music helps them to relax and to focus better. People listen to music for many other reasons as well. Music has been proven to produce serotonin, one of the so-called happiness hormones. The topic is music. A helpful way to identify the topic is to look for repeated words or phrases. The word music in this case was repeated in each sentence. The word may not be repeated in every sentence, but oftentimes there will be a pronoun that points us back to the topic. For instance, I like to listen to music when I study. Music calms me down. It helps me to focus. The first two sentences identify the topic, music, and the last sentence uses the pronoun it to refer back to the topic. Some paragraphs, however, are not as blatant. Some can be more tricky. Sometimes an author will use different words for the same thing. If you are studying for test day, Mometrics is the best way. This company specializes in preparing study material that help equip you with the knowledge you need and helping prevent test anxiety. Millions of students have used this resource to help them succeed on their exams. The topic is Mometrics. Even though the word is only stated once, the topic is repeated, but a different word is used to refer to the same thing. Once we've found the topic of the paragraph, we can then find the main idea. This may be a helpful way to help you identify the main idea. Topic plus main point about the topic equals main idea. Music can be an effective study tool. Some people say that it helps them to relax and to better focus on what they're learning. Some studies show that many students actually perform better when they listen to artists like Beethoven and Mozart while studying. The topic is music. The main point about the topic, music can be an effective study tool. Notice that topics are expressed as words or phrases, but main ideas are expressed in sentences. Physical activity provides innumerable benefits. Consistent exercise alleviates symptoms of depression. Studies show that consistent exercise results in not only less time to fall asleep in sounder sleep cycles, but also less daytime drowsiness. Additionally, an improved cardiovascular system and increased endorphins stimulate the mind for more creative thoughts to flow. The topic is physical activity. The main idea is physical activity provides innumerable benefits. In many paragraphs, the first sentence states the main idea. 
When the author states the main idea, it's called an explicit main idea. But the main idea is not always in the first sentence. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's... Oh, it's just a leaf. What does that mean? It's autumn. Autumn or fall marks the transition from summer to winter. There are several different ways to recognize this transition without looking at the calendar. For instance, if the leaves start to change colors and fall off, this is a good marker that it is autumn. The temperature in many parts of the world will also start to drop. In this paragraph, the first sentence is not the main idea. So let's look at the topic. We know that the topic is autumn because it is repeated and everything is referring back to it. Autumn or fall marks the transition from summer to winter is the main idea. This sentence includes the topic and it also makes a main point about the topic. It may seem a little silly that the sentence that states the main idea is called the topic sentence, but that's just the way it is. Always remember to find the main idea, figure out the topic first, then look for a sentence that states a main point about the topic, like the formula I gave you earlier, topic plus main point about the topic equals main idea. I hope this was helpful. Okay, so you have to find the theme in some book you read for school? Well, I think that with a few exceptions, theme is the most important element in a work of literature because the theme is the literary work's primary purpose. And by literary work, I mean any written work of art, like a novel, play, short story, poem, or even a screenplay. The theme, and here's your definition, is the central idea of a work of literature. I often oversimplify this term for students by saying it's kind of like the moral of the story, the life lesson the author wants you to take away from the book. It's the message or the meaning. And that meaning isn't just about the characters, it's more abstract than that. It applies to you and me and everyone. The theme is usually universal, but at the very least, it's an idea that's bigger than just these characters and this fictional world. Don't tell me that the theme in Lion King is that Simba had to go back to rule his kingdom. The theme is bigger than just that one character. The theme is that all people should live up to their responsibilities because they're needed by the people around them. You see, that's a theme. Also, a theme is not the same as a subject. The subject of a work can usually be expressed in a word or two. Family, courage, the nature of love, right? That's the subject. However, the theme is the idea that the writer wishes to express about that subject. It's an opinion, not a fact. If you tell me that the theme is love, I'll say that's wrong, and I'll ask you, what about love? The theme isn't a thing. It must be an opinion about that thing. That's why I tell students not to merely Google what is the theme of this book, because you'll often get things like, one of the themes of this book is love or social justice. The way I define it in my classes, those are subjects, not themes. Love isn't a theme. Love stinks is a theme. Get it? And it would be best if the opinion you came up with wasn't too obvious, like, it's good to be fair. Well, that's pretty obvious, and almost no one would disagree with that, so it isn't very interesting. And if that's all you need for the assignment you're currently working on, you can stop watching now. But theme is actually a little more complicated than that. You know how in life we notice things and we have experiences, we put things together in our minds and we gain insight or understanding about the world? We develop generalizations about how the world works or what people are like. For example, after several instances of having people pop up unexpectedly to help you reach some important goal, if you're an optimistic sort of person, you might say to yourself, well, I guess that's how life is. When you're trying to reach a difficult goal worth reaching, help will become available, even in the unlikeliest of situations. It's a nugget of wisdom you earned through observation and experience. You do this. Everyone does this. Chimpanzees can do this. Chimps learn that every year about this time, food can be found in this particular area. They make a generalization based on their experiences. That's a similar process as detecting a theme in a work of literature. When you read a work of literature, that book is a model of the real world. It's like a map or a globe. The author who created that model wants you to see the world through his or her eyes and probably hopes you'll come to similar conclusions about it. 
but she doesn't usually put it on a plate and just say it outright because it wouldn't really mean anything to you that way. So she shows you what some slice of the world looks like and expects you to put things together in your mind, just like you do in real life, making generalizations about the world based on these imagined experiences. We gain insight and understanding about the world that way. This is something that chimps can't do. If you show a chimpanzee a map of a room and show them that the banana is behind this door on the map, the chimpanzee can't apply that understanding to find the actual banana in the actual room. This process of making abstract meaning from a model is one of the things that makes us human. And just like in real life, a good work of literature is complex and could contain many themes, some large and obvious, some small and less obvious. If you're writing a theme essay for the first time, it might be a good idea to go with the big obvious theme. That's completely fine. I recommend it. But if you want a more interesting challenge, you could write about some smaller, more original theme. Either essay could earn you a good grade as long as it was well written and well supported. In some cases, a book could even contain contradictory themes. A play or novel could present two opposing themes and leave the choice to the reader. Or two separate readers could come to opposite conclusions. You read a book and you say that the theme is that hard work pays off. Then your friend reads the same book and says that the theme was, is that hard work is meaningless and that it's luck that matters. So just like in real life, two people with similar experiences can come to very different conclusions. And as long as each person can back up his or her theme with evidence from the book, then his or her opinion is legitimate. Now this might sound strange, but you can even come up with a theme that the author did not intend, or even flatly rejects. The author of a poem might say in an interview that he didn't intend for readers to conclude that the strong should conquer the weak, but you might see that theme in his poem anyway regardless of what he says. And if you can back that up with evidence from the text, then, for you, that's a theme in that poem. The reader owns the meaning, not the author. One of the best ways to find a good theme is A. To see what happens to the main character. Readers usually identify with the main character, especially if he or she is a protagonist, a sympathetic character with whom we identify. I say this because some main characters are unsympathetic, like the main character of Crime and Punishment, a very bad guy, and not all readers will identify with him. But in either case, if the main character changes over the course of the book in a good way, then a theme could be that readers should do whatever he did. So if a character is heroic in some way, the theme could be that those qualities are admirable and that we should be that way in our own lives. If a main character changes in a bad way, then the theme might be to avoid making that character's choices. For example, in Arthur C. Clarke's science fiction story, If I Forget Thee, O Earth, we learn that the main characters are stranded on the moon because the human race has made the Earth uninhabitable because of nuclear war. Because we see that the character's situation has changed in a very negative way, the theme is to avoid doing what they did. The theme of the story could be that mankind should learn to solve its conflicts without war or violence. And if you're interested in symbolism, here's a key to theme that served me well in college. Ask yourself, if the main character is a symbol for all mankind, what is the author saying about mankind? The answer to that could be your theme. B. Sometimes authors have a character just state the theme, often near the end of a book. It's often some meaningful conclusion about mankind or some aspect of life. A character might say something like, Well, Bob, love is like that, isn't it? Sometimes it's sweet and sometimes it's sour. But you know, I'll take my chances. So the theme could be exactly that, that love can be pleasurable and it can be painful, but it's worth the risk. Not all books contain a statement like that. But some do, and it's worth keeping an eye out for one. C. Another way to find a clue is to look at the title. That won't help with titles like Animal Farm or Romeo and Juliet, which are merely descriptive. But a lot of the time, authors put hints in the title. After you read Harper Lee's novel To Kill a Mockingbird, 
Think about when the killing of a mockingbird was talked about, and what was going on in the book at the time, what was being referred to. That will point you towards a main theme. Finally, D. Look at the main conflict. What forces are pitted against one another in this story, and who wins, and why? I don't mean what specific characters. I mean step back and look at what big group or idea is struggling against some other bigger group or idea. Let's say it's a ship captain and his crew struggling against a massive, uncontrollable white whale like in Moby Dick. Look at that in an abstract way. That's mankind versus nature. So maybe the theme has something to do with man's conflict with the massive, uncontrollable forces of the natural world. So let's review quickly. I'll put in some time indexes too, so if you want, you can rehear those particular sections. One, theme is kind of like the moral of the story. It's the message or meaning. Two, theme is bigger than just these characters and this story. Three, theme and subject are not the same thing. Theme is a debatable opinion about a subject. Four, the abstract meaning of the book applies to the real world we live in. The ability to do this is uniquely human. Five, literary works can contain many themes, and any theme is legitimate if you can back it up. Six, the meaning belongs to you, not the author. Seven, ways to find the theme include looking for changes in the main character, watching for clear statements of theme, examining the title, and looking at the conflict. Making meaning from literature, finding a theme, is one of the best things you can learn, because it's a real-world skill that will allow you to learn from experiences that someone else has had, that you haven't actually experienced yourself, and in turn you can apply that wisdom to your own life to be a smarter and happier person. And what is more important than happiness? Aesop was a writer in ancient Greece who wrote dozens of stories to teach us lessons about life. His stories are called fables, and the lessons are called morals. Well, what might happen if Aesop traveled through time and lived with us today? Uh-huh. Oh, I know. I know. Dad, do you have to wear that toga everywhere? Don't get out of the car. No, my dad. Pick me up. Yes, he wears it everywhere. I know, so embarrassing. Okay, bye. Uh, Dad! If you keep making fun of my clothes, Diana, you are going to hurt my feelings, and I won't be so inclined to drive you here and there. It's not that, Daddy. It's the floozy van. What's a floozy van? Not what, Dad? Who? He's this amazing designer, and all the girls have one of his bags. I am the only one who can't afford one, Daddy. I am the only girl in the whole entire universe who doesn't have a floozy van. The only one? Daddy, can't you get me one, please? Maybe you can get a job to earn the money for one of these bags. Ugh. I don't want one anyways. They're ugly, and all the people who have them aren't cool. <laughs> that reminds me of a story. Ugh. Not another fable, Dad. The toga is bad enough. <clears throat> there was a very hungry fox who saw some grapes hanging high on a vine. He lapped and lapped with all his might, but he could not reach the grapes. Finally, he said, those grapes aren't even ripe. I don't need any sour grapes. And, still hungry, he turned and walked away. That's it? Seriously? I thought you were supposed to be some great storyteller, Dad. Just think about it. Well, guess the story is like mine, but the details are different. Like, the fox really wants the grapes, and I really want a floozy van. Yes. And? And so the fox decides the grapes are sour, just like I have decided the purses are ugly. So what do these details tell you? 
I guess that if you don't have the means to get something you want, you shouldn't just pretend to change your mind to justify not working for it. Great job, sweetie. Yeah, it's a decent story. Now that I figured out the moral, Daddy, will you lend me the money to get a floozy van? No, but we are going to stop at the store because there is something I want to buy for you. Really? Oh, what is it? What is it? Some grapes. Hmm. After watching the video, I point to the students the difference between topic, main idea, theme, and moral of the story. Then, direct them how to write the correct topic, main idea, theme, and moral. The document you have seen in your screen has already been posted in the material section of Google Classroom. It contains the definition of topic, main idea, theme, and moral. So what is a topic? A topic is an important subject that is presented or revealed within a story. Usually, it is one word. So in the story of Kip, what is the topic? So the topic is dream. So what is a main idea? So a main idea of the story is generally what the story is about. It is a brief one sentence summary of the plot. So what is the main idea of the story of Pip? Pip is a small dog with big dreams. So what is the theme? The theme is a significant idea or statement that the story is making about the topic. It focuses on the deeper meaning or message that the reader is meant to consider. The theme often makes a statement about society, human nature, or the human condition. In the story of Kid, our theme is we dream big. The moral of the story or the lesson teaches that the principles of right and wrong and is often explicitly stated at the end. So what is the moral of the story of Kip? Doing the right thing leads us to the completion of our dream. With this, the students will already have the idea on how to differentiate topic main idea, theme, and moral. Given the model document, which contains the correct answer of theme, which is, we dream big, students will now go back to the anticipatory set activity, where they answer the question and assess if they have given the message or theme of the story. They do self-assessment exercise if their answer is really a theme. So we have here examples of self-assessment comments. The answer of Elna, one of my students, learning in school is meaningful and significant if it is applied in real life. So her self-assessment is, I do not know where my answer falls. The next activity that they're going to do is to assess two of their classmates' answers by giving comments. Let's check the peer assessment commentaries. We have here example, the answer of Fritzel. Strength comes from overcoming the things you once thought you couldn't. So her classmates commented, very good. It seemed your answer is the theme I don't know, according to Elna. Jen Top also commented, this is the main idea. So based on the discussion thread, most of the students associate theme with moral. 
In this case, none of my students were able to get the theme of the story. The fifth learning design sequence is guided practice. This time, the teacher decided to have this in synchronous session. In this stage, the students practice the new learning under teacher's direct supervision. The students meet in real time using Zoom meeting. I will lead the students through the steps necessary to perform the skill using a tri-model approach. Here, see, do. Inspired by the story of Kip, this time, I know you have your own story to tell. Each of us has inspiring stories to share. Today, you need to share your story. Who knows, you might inspire one of us here. I will divide you in groups and you will be in your assigned breakaway rooms. In minutes, you share your life story to your group mate. After sharing, you decide for a common topic, main idea, theme, and moral of your story. Make sure you write them correctly. After 15 minutes, we go back to the main classroom for you to share your output per group. This time, I will go to breakout room number one. Sure. This time, I will go to break out room number two. Ah? Oh, Anna. Oh. We are struggling. We are struggling. In the middle of the people's COVID, this pandemic. During the presentation, I will be using a spinning wheel app for the order of presenters. If it's your turn to present, please screencast your phone or laptop for us to see the file you have sent in the stream. Then you can report to the class the common story of your life for three minutes. The counting of time starts, we start talking. Once again, good afternoon, teachers and classmates. We are from Group 1, I am with classmate Elna, classmate Lenny, and classmate Vernell. We talk stories of our lives, and most of us talk about this following topic, giving back. Our story's main idea fall in giving back is thanking someone for the blessings that we receive. And all of our stories give us the message that ang taong hindi marunong lumingon sa pinanggalingan ay higit pa sa malansang isda. The moral of our stories is giving back is an attitude. Let's give them a big clap. Students, you can now tap the button of the clap for the reaction. Group do, do you agree with the answers of group one? Yes. 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 Their answers are correct. Now let's proceed to group two. Hello, teacher. Good afternoon. I am Christian. I am to present the work of group two. We anchor our work with what we are um what is happening today. Our topic is all about hope. 
and, and we have our main idea. We are losing hope in the middle of this pandemic, but there are people who are willing to help. And our theme or the message, we rise by lifting others. And the moral of our story is, never lose hope, good things will come soon. That will be all for Group 2, ma'am. Thank you, Group 2. Now, Group 1, let's give them a big clap. You can tap the button for the reaction. Group 1, do you agree with the answers of Group 2? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yes, ma one yes ma'am okay. so the answers are correct yay when i am already sure that the students understand the lesson i will assign independent practice sequence this time i will let them practice on their own based on learning there will be no supervision and scaffolding from me already. Upon sensing that the students are already ready for independent learning, I will now post the URL of literary reading at Google Classroom assignment section for the students to read. Through an upgrade graphic organizer, write the topic, main idea, theme, and moral of the story. In making or creating the graphic organizer, the following are the instructions. First, download images or graphic designs from Google. Design a graphic organizer showing the topic, main idea, theme, moral of a signed story. You may use the Google Docs or the slide presentation or some other tools that you know. Second, Upload or attach the file in Google Classroom assignment section. You may also copy and paste the link of your output if you are using other tools. Just copy the link and paste to the assignment section comment. Do not forget to turn in upon submitting any activity from Google Classroom. God bless everyone. Let's look at the flow or delivery of the content knowledge. First, anticipatory set. We are using asynchronous learning. Second, objective or purpose. We are also using asynchronous learning. Third, modeling and input. Synchronous learning. Fourth, checking of understanding. Asynchronous learning. Guided practice. Synchronous learning. And for the last sequence, which is independent practice, we are using asynchronous learning. That would be all. Thank you. Bye. City of Cebu, you're a navy.